plastic litter, it's everywhere. Including in our oceans where it's reached the remotest of trenches and islands. One particularly deadly component of this plastic trash is fishing gear. Nets, traps and other equipment that got lost, abandoned or simply discarded in the ocean. Most types of fishing gear today are made from plastics like nylon that make them very durable, light and buoyant and therefore easier for fishers to use. But when these nets or traps are lost at sea, these same qualities let the fishing gear persist in the ocean for years at a stretch. Catching and killing unsuspecting animals from fish and crabs to birds, turtles, seals, sharks and whales. Fisheries sustain billions of people on our planet by providing food and incomes. In recent decades though, there has been a rapid increase in the number of fishing vessels with about 4.6 million of them out on the seas as of 2018. Increasing along with the number of fishing boats is the problem of ghost fishing gear. The most recent estimate suggested that as of 2009, more than half a million tons of fishing gear was getting abandoned in the ocean each year the numbers will be higher today. Overall, fishing gear makes up around 10% of all marine plastic litter, but in some places it is more abundant. For example, it constitutes nearly half of the plastic waste in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a massive collection of marine debris in the North Pacific Ocean that's nearly three times the size of Kenya. So why is there so much derelict fishing gear in the ocean? Generally, responsible fishers don't want to permanently lose their gear. After all, it's a considerable investment on their part. Gear lost at sea can also risk fishers' safety if it gets entangled in their boat's propellers. So fishers generally try to retrieve gear that's gone loose. Sometimes though, the loss of fishing nets is unintentional or unavoidable. When bad weather strikes, fishers might be forced to leave their nets behind or even cut their gear adrift because of safety concerns. Nets can get snagged on some obstruction on the seafloor and may rip into smaller fragments that float away. Or other vessels might accidentally cut the buoys marking the gear, making it difficult to locate and retrieve later. Other times, fishers abandon their gear intentionally. This can happen when retrieving the nets or fishing devices is too complicated or time-consuming and just not economical, especially if the gear is old or badly tangled. Most fishing gear has a finite lifespan beyond which it must be discarded. If disposal facilities on land are inconvenient or expensive, fishers may use the sea as their dumping ground, especially where regulations or monitoring are lax. Once it's in the ocean, ghost gear can remain there for hundreds of years according to some estimates. And that's a big problem because whether tended or not, fishing gear is designed to catch marine animals. In fact, unintentional entanglement in fishing gear, whether it's derelict or in active use, is a major concern for marine life. In 2019, for example, a dead pregnant mink whale washed ashore on a Scottish beach. She had a fishing net jammed in her baleen, the filter feeding system inside certain whales' mouths. One estimate suggests that more than 650,000 marine mammals are accidentally killed or seriously injured by fishing gear every year. Entanglement in nets is also a leading cause of death for some critically endangered species like the North Atlantic right whale, which scientists estimate has fewer than 400 individuals remaining. Derelict gear can create an endless loop of entanglements. Fish get entangled, this attracts predators that also might get entangled, and when they die, they attract scavengers that can go down the same path. Some people are trying to reduce the amount of ghost gear in our oceans. The Global Ghost Gear Initiative, a coalition of more than 100 groups, has developed what it calls a best practice framework for seafood companies, regional fisheries agencies, NGOs and governments to implement. It includes solutions like strategically looking for and removing gear from the water and getting fishers to properly dispose of gear that's nearing the end of its life instead of dumping it in the sea or on the shore. 
other programs are experimenting with marking and tagging fishing gear using technologies like satellite buoys, barcoding, radio frequency identification and global positioning systems. These can help fishers better monitor their gear and retrieve it if it gets lost. Some of these methods might be expensive and impractical for smaller fisheries to use. And researchers say that solutions should be customized for every region. Once you know the source of the coast gear and the problem areas, you can start developing solutions together with fishers. That way, our oceans can have a fighting chance against the tsunami of plastic waste.